this video, I will talk about this uh, very useful Houdini file path manager tool. Okay, you can download the tool from this URL, github.com, VFS Kevin file manager. Okay, basically, this is a GUI tool and a central place for managing all your Houdini file path, such as uh, textures and geometries. The UI looks like this. So basically, you can use the filters to search for nodes that has a certain parameter name and file type. By default, the file type is image. It will list all the nodes that has image file parameters on them. Of course, you need to specify a path to search. In this screenshot here, I'm using slash, which is the root. And all the nodes that has image file parameters are highlighted in red. You can click on one of them or more so that their image file parameters will be added to this uh, parameter view. And also, by using the parameter view, you can double click on any of the file path here to edit the value directly. Or you can use the browse button to browse to a new file or sequence of files. And you can use the P button for preview the image in and play minimal UI mode. And on the right hand side, you have the tools that you can do batch processing. For example, you can copy the files of the selected parameters to a certain directory and also set the parameter path to the final path. You can also move, you can also repath. And the functionalities are documented here. For filter part, it will filter the nodes based on the node name, node type, parameter name, and parameter file type. And as for the installation, it's also documented here. Basically, we need to go to the releases page and download one of the uh, zip file and unzip and put the file to corresponding locations. Okay, let me give you a quick demo. Okay, first let's go to releases and the current latest version is 0.1.7 and then you can expand the assets here and click on one of the source code zip files on Windows. I use the first one. Okay, so I downloaded this and if it goes to my download folder, right, this is the zip file. I right click, extract all from the zip file and I end up with a folder. If you go inside the folder, you'll find a folder with same name. If you go inside this folder, then you can see that these are the two scripts. Then you know that you're going to move this folder to your software library. For me, I will right click, cut this folder and go to my documents, apps, Houdini packages. All right, this is where I put all my Houdini packages. I already have one downloaded previously, so I just delete this one first. I will paste the one that I cut here. And then you, if you go inside the folder, then you need to right click on the whole file manager.json file. Right click on the file and copy this file to your documents, Houdini 20.5. This is your preferences folder for Houdini 20.5. Inside here, we need to look for packages folder. If it doesn't have one, you need to create one yourself. Once the folder is created, you just go inside the folder, paste the file here because I already had installed this one. So let me remove the old one and paste the new one inside here. The last step is to edit one of the paths inside the file. So you can use any text editor you want. For me, I will use PyCharm. Once it's loaded in the text editor, we just need to update this path here. Remove this part. And let's go back to our software library and go inside this uh, whole file manager 2.1.7 and copy this full path and paste into the JSON file here. Please note that uh, on Windows, my PyCharm editor will give me double backslashes to avoid character escaping. But if your text editor doesn't do so, just to be safe, you can change them to normal slash. So this path depends on where you put your Houdini package. It could be D drive, could be different usernames. Okay. And once you done the editing, you just save and close the file. The installation is done. Let's launch Houdini to take a look at the tool. Okay, so I'm in Houdini now. So the first thing to do is to launch the UI. So you can go to this new tab here. I look for who file manager. 
and this will be our UI. Let's just quickly set up a simple grid with some textures. So at the geometry level, I will just create a grid. Then if you go inside the grid, we need to assign some UV before we apply any texture to it. So just drop a UV texture node, and you can see the UV here. Next thing we want to do is to drop a material node. And we can also create a material network. When we go inside the material network, we can create a principal shader. And for this principal shader, I would like to use the preset of uh, bricks. I also want to change the name of the principal shader to principal shader underscore brick. All right, then I go back to this geometry level and go select the material node. And I'm going to assign the principal shader bricks to the grid. Okay, so now you can see the texture applied to the grid in the viewport. Say that uh, I'm going to change texture path. So instead of going into MagNet, select the node, go to different tab and look for the parameters. I can go to my tool specify a path to search for nodes that have image file parameters. So for now, I will just search from the root, which is select here. Then it will highlight to me this principal shader bricks in red color. Okay, so when I select this node, and you can see that uh, all the parameters that are image file type parameters listed here. So you can use the tools, the P button for preview. So you can either preview the image, and this will launch uh, and play and play in minimal UI mode so that you can use middle mouse to pan and red mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. Say, and I want to preview the roughness as well. And this will be my roughness texture. This is to preview the textures. If you want to change the path, you can directly double click on any of the textures. I double click, say, oh, I have a new texture called uh, Test base color. Then once you change that, if you select the principal shader, you can see that the path will be updated. So these two values are linked. If you do any changes here, say, oh, this will be my new test texture, and this will be updated as well. So these two are linked. But because we don't have the texture, nothing will be shown here. Because if you want to change it back, we can use the browse button, go to Texture folder, I look for the textures, which is this one, bricks, usual one. Okay, select it again, it okay, go back to normal, and you can see that the value here and here are both updated. All right, so that's uh, how you can just double click on any of the string to directly edit it, or use the browse button to select using a UI. And often we also will face some other issues. For example, uh, if I change projects, I want to copy some of the textures into another location. For example, in this case, I'm using the textures from Houdini directories, but I want to copy those files into my current project. Okay, so I can make some changes and do certain stuff. In order to do that, I need to save my current scene file so that it can find dollar heap folders. Let me save my project. Just to desktop, I will create a folder. This will be my whole file manager demo project. Inside the project, I will save my file. This will be my whole demo dot heap. Accept. Once the project is created and also our heap file is saved into the project, then we can access the dollar heap folder, which is the project folder. So let's say we want to copy some of the textures into our project from Houdini folder. So instead of uh, sourcing textures from HFS, we'll be sourcing textures from HIP slash text. If you browse to that folder, you don't have the text subfolder under the dollar heap folder. So in this case, we can select the dollar heap and create a new folder. We name it TEX. So now I have dollar heap slash text. Accept. Then I can select three textures 
and use the copy file action to copy files of selected parameters of the tree and set path to dollar heap slash text. Okay, so when I click run, the files will be copied to dollar heap and this parameter values will be updated. All right, so now if you preview, you can see the textures. Also, you can see that the textures were copied to the text folder of the project. So that's the copy action. And sometimes we also want to move some of the textures to another directory. For example, if I go back to the dollar heap folder and I have a workflow, I have a subfolder final texture. I want to move the base color texture, move. The selected to dollar heap final texture folder run the texture will be moved to the folder okay so if you preview the text is okay and if you check the directories the face color texture is there the last one of the file action is repath so this is for cases where you manually move some of the textures but without updating Houdini, then of course the links are broken then you want to repath those broken paths to the new path Say for example, I want to go to my project, go to textures. So I have decided these two textures are final. Then I move from the texture to my final texture, paste it here. The files are all in the final texture, but the paths here are not updated. In this case, I can select these two, use the repath functionality to repath the files of selected parameters to this new path, right? This final texture path. So I click run, these two are updated. The repath file action will only simply just replace the path with the new path without checking the file is this or not. All right, but you can use the preview button to verify if the links are working and actually the files are there already. And all the three file actions are supporting udeem.f style sequence file path. Okay, now let's go deeper into the filters. Let's say in my material network, I have more shaders. So this one will be my water material. And I have another one for base shader. Because we have new shaders in the scene, we need to use the refresh button to update our node view. And all the three nodes will be listed here. And once you select those, all the parameters will be listed here also. And let's say we have so many materials that I want to filter them by name. Then I can say, I want any shader that start with water. I can see that I only have that one water mat. Or I can say that uh, I want any shader end with uh, bricks or both. And I can, of course, say I want a shop for our, our principal shaders. And of course, these are already principal shaders. I can also search for parameters that only has base color in it. And I will say base color, I'll start with base color. And I will say, oh, principal shader bricks has base color. Uh, you may say that uh, water material also has base color channel. But if you go there and check, the base color is not enabled. So it doesn't have. This is for image file type parameters. I can also say that uh, I have a file cache node here now. For the file cache node, I want to change the file path to explicit so that I have this a uh, full path. And then if I refresh my view and also update my filters to everything, everything here, also everything here. But I only want geometry path. If you show only file cache one, when you select that, it is a file parameter, which is this one. And of course, you can change to a different location. Say, I want to save the file cache into a folder in my project called cache. All right, dollar heap cache. And then the name, I want it to be uh, my great dollar f dot bgo dot c. So what is done, this will be updated as well. So you can try to save to disk. And inside the cache folder, one cache will be generated. 
and let's maybe try I try call caches save to disk then if I want to move these files into another directory I can do move the selected files into my new directory called fan cache so I will move the selected file caches into this uh, heap final cache folder when I click run then the file path is updated to final cache and all the file caches are moved to final cache folder so the cache folder is empty now this tool is also very useful when you import a film box okay so i have one film box file here and for the imported film box file it has some geometry and inside the material network it has a lot of uh, materials and each one comes with uh, some textures so in this case if i want to copy the textures into my projects I can refresh the UI because I have uh, added a node into the scene. Okay, so these are the uh, new shaders. I can select some of them and check the files are still hard coded to my download folder. So actually, I can copy them. Right. In this case, I don't want to select parameters. I can say copy all the listed parameters in this parameter view. Right. Copy all the files of those parameters into my final texture folder and if you run then if you go to your final textures then you can see that the textures are copied to this folder and also the path are updated to the correct path this is very convenient instead of going into individual material to do the job manually you can use this tool to batch process all this together. So that's the basic functionality of the tool and hope you like it. And if any suggestions, please let me know. Thanks.